Brian. Happy Monday. Good morning, Brian Nitsch. Hey, good morning. Happy Monday, yes. Happy Monday. John North in the house. How are you, sir? I'm good. I'm good. Just drinking some Miss Brown Eyes. Excited to be here with you uh, to Excellent. start this uh, new day and this new week uh, yes. in God's Word. And uh, just, I enjoy this, you know. And, and here we are in Exodus chapter one. We have finished Genesis. I've mm-hmm. had a great time with you. Yeah, it was good. Good. Ex- what a Genesis. Mm. I heard I heard a I heard somebody say the other day or yesterday actually it was it's Genesis is actually genes is it's like the beginning where we came from our DNA oh genes is oh, anyway I never, I never thought about that way that's cool I mean, yeah yeah it was a good time it was a good read I mean, we I, learned I a lot I know it was a good walk yeah it, it was, was a good walk, walk. yeah so uh, like we say here grab your walking stick. Grab your Bible, grab your coffee, yeah. and uh, or your yeah. bang. You got the bang today. You're, oh, you're doing. Oh, oh, wait, hold on, hold on. Rainbow unicorn, you're doing black oh, cherry. Man. You're doing mm-hmm. black cherry. Good. Uh, I had my bang early this morning. I, I was bet. up at four thirty, and now I'm sipping on some Miss Brown Eyes. So doing doing the double whammy, but I'm excited. Exodus chapter one, as we as we move on through the Bible, through God's Word, uh, verse by verse, chapter by chapter, book by book. Going all the way through. So if you're, for some reason, just tuning in now, continue with us, of course, but also get caught up. Go back and, and get caught up to, to where we are here. So, yep. Um, um, and sorry for being a little late. Uh, new schedule. Uh, I will be right on time for, for tomorrow at 6 a.m. Pacific time. So, um, but yeah, you have a good weekend, Brian? I did, yeah, very relaxing. Just uh, still recovering, trying not to do a lot, trying to move around a lot, and uh, it was good. Not a bad weekend at all. Very I, good. And and you too. You went on a trip, didn't you? Yeah, we went on a, a family camping trip to spread my grandpa's ashes on his uh, childhood lake. Yeah, yeah. So he he passed away actually a few months ago, and of course we did the funeral uh, back then, but we wanted to do a big camping trip and spread his ashes on the lake that he grew up on. And we did that. So it was great. It was great. Right but my, my grandma passed away a few days ago. And so it's, it's been a, you know, an emotional, um, emotional time. And so we're going to have her funeral here next week and, um, then go out to her childhood lake in Oregon, which is another lake and do the same thing, uh, for her wishes uh, oh, wow. as well. But, you know, just the family coming together, um, and just, and just being close to each other and, a celebration of life for, for both of them as they lived a long life. So, yep. That's a good thing. Yeah. Um, that is yeah. a good thing. All right. Well, let's, uh, let's get to it. Exodus right. chapter one. Um, uh, well, let's go. Let's huh? go. Chapter one, Brian Knight hit it off with yeah. a bang. Let's go. All right. Well, let's pray first. Lord, yeah. we, we love you. We thank you for this day again. Lord, open our eyes, open our hearts. Just give us uh wisdom. As we read your word, just uh, direct us, Lord, what to say, what to think. Lord, you, we rely on you in all things and just thank you for everything you've done for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right. Beautiful. Exodus 1, verse 1, New Living, New, new Living, the Israelites in Egypt. In Egypt. So. These are the names of the sons of Israel, that is Jacob, who moved to Egypt with their father, each with his family, Reuben, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Ishakar, Zebulun, Benjamin, Dan, Nephilim, Gad, and Asher. In all, Jacob had 70 descendants in Egypt, including Joseph, who was already there. Now, I'm, I'm assuming that he's talking about men, the males, 70 males. Verse 6, in time, Joseph and all his brothers died ending that entire generation. But their descendants and the Israelites had many children and grandchildren. In fact, they multiplied so great that they became extremely powerful, filled the land. Eventually, a new king a new king came to power in Egypt who knew nothing about Joseph or what he had done. He said to his people, Look, the people of Israel now outnumber us and are stronger than we are. We must make a plan to keep them from growing even more. There comes the bad pharaoh. Yeah, the bad pharaoh. Here comes the bad pharaoh. <laughs> verse 10, if we don't... Wait, wait, verse 10. If we make a plan to keep them from growing even more, if we don't, 
and if war breaks out, they will join our enemies and fight against us. Then they will es escape from the country. So the Egyptians made the Israelites their slaves. This is a bad kind of slave. They appointed brutal slave drivers over them, hoping to wear them down with cr cr crushing labor. They forced them to build the cities of Python and Ramses as supply centers for the king. But the, but the more the Egyptians oppressed them, the more the Israelites multiplied and spread, and the more alarmed the Egyptians became. Mm. Yeah, God, God multiplied them. Mm -hmm. So the Egyptians worked the people of Israel without mercy. They made their lives bitter, forcing them to mix mortar and make bricks and do all the work in the fields. Mm. They were ruthless in their demands. Then Pharaoh and the king, of Egypt, the king of Egypt gave this order to the Hebrew midwives, Sephara and Pua. When you help the Hebrew women out, when you help the women as they give birth, watch as they deliver. If the baby is a boy, kill him. If it's a girl, let her live. But because the midwives feared God, they refused to obey the king's orders. They allowed the boys to live too. So the king of Egypt called for the midwives. Why have you done this? He demanded. Why have you allowed the boys to live? Hebrew women are not like Egyptian women. The midwives reply, they are more vigorous and have their babies so quickly that we cannot get there in time. So God was good to the midwives and the Israelites continued to multiply, growing more and more powerful. And because the midwives feared God, he gave them families of their own. Then Pharaoh gave this order to all his people, throw every newborn baby, Hebrew baby, into the Nile. But you may let the girls live. Next chapter. Wow. Oh, man. Wow. He's murdering. He's trying to, Pharaoh, talk about evil, murdering the Hebrew boys. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's so horrible. He, I mean, just be between that and then how he's treating the, uh, you know, the, the, the Hebrews and with the slave. I mean, this is bad slavery, like you said. Horrible. This is horrible. Horrible. Yeah, this is definitely not any kind of working relationship with uh, the person who lent you money or lent you land or lent you any kind of uh, uh, help, you know, where like indentured servanthood type is where is what we normally have in, in, in the Bible, right? Where where um, someone ha has a servant or a, they call it a, a slave, but it's not like, you know, I own you. It's you're working for me for a certain amount of time. And you're part of my family. You just happen to work for me paying back debt. But this is different. This is evil. This is owning people. This is brutalizing and killing and, and, yeah. and murder and, and all kinds of other things. So this is not godly. No. And I actually had to go help my uh, my daughter who woke up. Um, and so I missed 15 and down uh, yeah, so toward the end. So it says, yeah, Sorry, if you want to read that yeah. again, if you can. Yeah, it was just the Pharaoh kept, uh, 15, kept the Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, gave this order to the Hebrew midwives, Sephora um, and Pua. When you help the women, the Hebrew women, as they give birth, watch as they deliver. If they're boys, kill the oh boys. Oh, my gosh. But let the girls live. And but the, but the girls, but the midwives feared God, and they refused to obey the king. So the boys lived. And now, then the, were the midwives yeah. um, Jewish women or were they Jew, Egyptians? They were Jews. Oh, yeah. They were, okay. They were, yeah, the, yeah. Wow. So of course they were on God's side and they, and they didn't mm -hmm. do that. I mean, what, what was the, I mean, just for the fact that the, the, the new Pharaoh here, uh, the horrible new Pharaoh uh, would even expect them to do that. Mm -hmm. I oh, mean, to turn on their people and to turn on God just to please him, the Pharaoh. I mean, that's ridiculous. I mean, just that's his mindset of being so prideful and, to me, a little, you know, I mean, obviously crazy. Oh, evil. It's just evil, full of, right. well, look what, look what, he, remember, once again, fear is what drives the, the, the hate here. He says in verse 8, the, the king became so powerful, he knew that nothing about Joseph or what Joseph had done. And the people outnumbered the Egyptians. 
look, in verse 8, verse 9, mm -hmm. the people of Israel now outnumbered us, and they are stronger than us, so we must make a plan to keep them from growing even more. So fear, once again, is is the, the driver of evil. It literally is the always the driver of evil. Mm -hmm. Fearing others, you know, fearing your own death, fearing fearing someone taking over your life or doing something to your family or whatever. Yeah. You know, wow, it's that's, crazy. That's, that's a great crazy. point. Well, and also just being prideful. Mm -hmm. Just being like, I want my my people to be more powerful and to to reign and to to keep this one person down, this one people down. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm going to be greater than everybody else. I mean, that's just. I mean, that's just evil. You know? Absolutely, um, you know. I mean, the the first Pharaoh who we read in. Genesis. I mean, it was seemed to be just all love and come on over and let's just share the land and all get along and, you know, be as one. I mean, of course, there's hierarchy in the governments and all that. But I mean, here we have this Pharaoh who's just like, no, let's push this. Let's push these people down to make me feel better. I mean, that's just crazy. Yeah, it is. Um, it's it's it is kind of um, it's kind of sad that Joseph, he's gone. He's he's passed away, and uh, it's it's kind of just a quick brush through here. You know, we don't get the big, you know, Joseph has passed, and we don't get a lot of the details. And um, I don't know if that's going to come up later, Brian. But here, it's very just brush through. Joseph passed, his brothers passed, generations, generations, you know, have uh, have occurred, and. All of a sudden, now there's this new pharaoh, and Egypt has changed, and this new pharaoh doesn't even know who Joseph is or was, which I I, I find that hard to believe. I feel like, you know, he's he's, you know, maybe maybe lying about that or or says that he doesn't. But uh, what's your take on this? I don't really know. I don't. I mean, it seems to me like I mean. If you if you if you read the history of Egypt, a lot of times the pharaohs will wipe out the the past uh, pharaohs doing, right? And they'll stamp them out and, and make their own. You know, they build their own cities, they build their own towers, they build their own, um, you know, temples and so on. So he could have ignored, you know, and just bypassed the whole idea of who is this man. You know what happened when when uh, Egypt was saved, you know, things like that. So I don't, I don't know if he's lying more of more of just I don't really care about the past. I am I am a god king. You know the word Pharaoh means like god king. Mm. So yeah, yeah, I don't know if he's mean, lying, but it's more like lying. Look lying at me, was the uh, wrong word. I shouldn't have used that because I'm not I'm not saying that the the Bible is lying. God's word is lying here. So that sure, was, right. That's something I, I I want to take back. I, I don't. I didn't mean to say it like that. I just, um, you know, if the Bible says it, it's true. So I mean, he he he, yeah, he didn't he didn't know who Joseph was, and he didn't know his history, and he didn't know his past. And it was probably on purpose. You know, obviously God's plan here is working, as we know. Mm -hmm. Um, but uh, yeah. It's everything's everything's perfectly being set up, though. You know, as much as we can sit here and say, you know, like, oh no, this is this is not good. You know, everything is being set up, um, in order here. Yeah. Um, oh, it is. Yeah. It's falling into place. God, you know, God knows people's hearts. He knows Pharaoh. He knows Pharaoh's hearts. Heart. He knows Moses' heart. So he's going to use, and that's the thing, he's going to use the situation we talk about free will versus, you know, um, you know, God's plan. And so, and the answer is yes, because he knows what's going to happen. So he takes the situations and he molds, you know, the plan. Mm -hmm. And it is, it is happening. It's hap It's, it's about to be set up just like the plan is being, be, being, um, played out here. Mm-hmm. You know, Exodus 2, the birth of Moses. Yeah. So we leave off in one, right, where the babies are supposed to be thrown into the Nile. All the men, all the boys. So first the midwives are supposed to kill the boys. And then apparently the the, the Hebrew women said, oh, Hebrews have, the Hebrews have babies way too fast. They just shoot them out. We don't have time to figure it out. And they're already born. 
You know, it's crazy, Brian, that we, we read Genesis, uh, we read Exodus one and then we look at, I mean, gosh, many other times in the Bible, many other times in the world's history, you know, uh, uh, we talk about, you know, the Holocaust, you know, we talk about what's happening Mm -hmm. to Israel right now and really has been, I mean, from, from pretty much from day one. The world has been trying to just wipe out the Jews, you know, the Hebrews, the Israelites, um, you know, all three are the same, but it's, uh, yeah, you know, from day one, that's my point. It's, it's wow. I mean, God's people are hated period. I mean, if from, from the beginning of time to even now, as we turn the news on, um, you know, even the anti-Semitic, uh, things going on in America constantly, especially now over the last few days and death to Israel. And there's, there's chants and groups gathering in America as we mm-hmm. speak right now, death to Israel. And, you know, media is not covering it and Israel's the bad guy and, you know, for defending themselves, etc. I mean, I can get into politics, but bottom line is, is that it's a never ending story here. Never ending. It literally is over and over. Well, it all started back in the garden. Hebrews, I mean, Genesis chapter 3, God says, I, I'm going to put enmity or a, hate, a hatred or, a, or a, a, fight, a fight between your seed, Satan, and, and the woman's seed, Israel. Mm. And so uh, the righteous seed. And so ever since then, the enemy has been trying to overtake God's people and to thwart or stop the plan of God. And that's what's happening. Mm. He knows the enemy knows and all the enemy, not just Satan, but every demon out there, they know that Israel are the chosen people. And every time that he comes against them, God, but that, yeah, stands in the way and he will. But that's why evil always attacks the Jews Mm -hmm. because they are the chosen people. So what does the devil do? He wants to kill those chosen people. He wants to go against God. Precisely. I mean, hundred percent. You know, and, and anybody, even Gentiles, Christians. Yep. You know, with the new covenant yep. that we have as our Lord and Savior right. Jesus Christ. I mean, um, you know, devil. The devil checks the, all of the above box. Mm-hmm. You know, as far as bringing people down and and making them stumble and deceiving them and separating yep. them from God on a daily basis. The devil, the demons. It's it's a it's like we talk about it's a spiritual battle, but I think especially the Jewish people from day one, like you just talked about, Brian. It's it's an ongoing battle against the Jewish people, and we see it from from now from the Garden of Eve, even as you said to to, to now. It's just amazing, mm-hmm. man. It's just right here in print. It never ends, you know. And um, I think it's important. That's why we need to stand by Israel. I do too. I do too. 100% stand by Israel. Um, you know, God's God's people. I'll it's read good, two. It's a good thing. All right, go for it. Exodus chapter two. All right, the birth of Moses. That's a big one here. Okay, about this time, a man and a woman from the tribe of Levi got married. The woman became pregnant and gave birth to a son. She saw that he was a special baby and kept him hidden. For three months, but when she could no longer hide him, she got a basket made of paperus reeds and waterproofed it with tar and pitch. She put the baby in the basket and laid it among the reeds along the bank of the Nile River. The baby's sister, uh, the baby's sister, then stood at a distance, watching to see what would happen to him. Five. Soon, Pharaoh's daughter came down to the bath, to the bath, bathe. I'm sorry. Bathe. Soon, the Pharaoh's daughter came down to bathe in the river, and her attendants walked along the riverbank. When the princess saw the basket among the reeds, she sent her maid to get it for her. When the princess opened it, she saw the baby. The little boy was crying, and she felt so sorry for him. This must be one of the Hebrew children, she said. 
Then the baby sister approached the princess. Should I go and find one of the Hebrew women to nurse the baby for you? She asked. Yes, do, the princess replied. So the girl went and called the baby's mother. 9. Take this baby and nurse him for me. The princess told the baby's mother, I will pay you for your help. So the woman took her baby home and nursed him. Later, when the boy was older, his mother brought him back to Pharaoh's daughter, who adopted him as her own son. The princess named him Moses, for she explained, I lifted him out of the water. Moses escapes to Midian. 11. Many years later, when Moses had grown up, he went to visit his own people, the Hebrews, and he saw how hard they were forced to work. During his visit, he saw an Egyptian beating one of his fellow Hebrews. After looking in all directions to make sure no one was watching, Moses killed the Egyptian and hid the body in the sand. 13. The next day, when Moses went to uh, went out to visit the people again, he saw two Hebrew men fighting. Why are you beating up your friend? Moses said to one of uh, to, to the one who started the fight. The man replied, "Who appointed you? Who appointed you to be our prince and judge? Are you going to kill me as you killed the Egyptian yesterday?" Then Moses was afraid, thinking, everyone knows what I did. And sure enough, Pharaoh heard what happened. And he tried to kill Moses. But Moses fled from Pharaoh and went to live in the land of Midian. When Moses arrived in Midian, he sat down beside a well. Beside a well. Now the priest of Midian had seven daughters who came as usual to draw water and fill the water uh, trous. For their father's flocks, but some of but some other pharaohs, I'm sorry, but some other shepherds came and chased them away. So Moses jumped up and rescued the girls from the pharaoh from the shepherds. Then he drew water for their flocks. When the girls returned to Ruel, their father he asked, "Why are you back so soon today?" An Egyptian rescued us from the shepherds, they answered. And then he drew water for us and watered our flocks. Then, where is he? The father asked. Why did you leave him there? Invite him and come, uh, invite him to come eat with us. 21. Moses accepted the invitation and he settled there with him. In time, Ruel gave Moses his daughter, Zipporah, to be his wife. Later, she gave birth to a son, and Moses named him Gershom. For he explained, I have been a foreigner in a foreign land. 23. Years passed, and the king of Egypt died. But the Israelites continued to groan under the burden of slavery. They cried out for help. And their cry rose up to God. God heard their groaning. And he remembered his covenant promise to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He looked down on the people of Israel and knew it was time to act. <laughs> it's time, baby. This is a huge chapter. Look at like, like what have starts with uh, the birth of Moses. And now, um, and now he's getting married. <laughs> yeah, it went quick. Or about to. And then the uh, the bad pharaoh died, thankfully. Mm-hmm. Um, what an interesting... So Moses was born, but they knew Moses was special. I love that. Like, just right off the bat. Like, yeah. think about how yeah. many Hebrew boys were born. And, you know, of course, every parent thinks their, their baby is special. Right. But, you know, it's very clear that Moses is, uh, I don't know how you say this, extra special. There's just a sense God is working here. So they, um, why did they float the baby down the river then? Why didn't the Hebrew mother just, uh, keep Moses? Why float him down the river? Yeah, that's a good question. First of all, I, I, if you remember, um, they're supposed to kill the babies when they're born, if they're boys. And then he, and then the Pharaoh said, throw them in the water. 
So my thinking is they they uh, they knew the women knew that the Egyptian women were would would were bathing in that river, the Nile or whatever it was, right in the Nile. I think they knew that or they, they an angel told them, the Holy Spirit told them something, something. They knew that look, if we just take if take Moses, he's special. We'll put him in, in, in this this little ark. And we'll put him down, and and somebody will take him. I just know it, you know. So I'm sure they had that that feeling. That's the only thing I can think of. There's no instruction here, or or that they were given, or that you know, at least that was written down. There had to be some kind of intuition, or the, you know, by revelation of God, or something. Or they knew, you know, they knew the situation, and they knew the women bathed bathed uh, down in the river. Mm-hmm. You know, and they're hoping. I mean, if you if the plan worked out perfect, right? Um, not only did uh, does not only does Moses get get saved by the the um, Pharaoh's daughter uh, or wife, rather, she she actually calls for Moses's mother to nurse him to 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 manhood. So it's pretty amazing how it worked out. Yeah, out of all people, the Pharaoh's daughter, the princess. And yeah, the Pharaoh's, the princess doesn't say, kill this Hebrew boy. Yeah. But she rescues him and says, let's take care of him and give him back to his mother and nurse him. And then she comes later and adopts him, takes Moses, which, would, by the way, would be really hard on the mother. I mean, here you oh. have, you, you sent your baby down river, your baby... You know, mag- you know, remarkably gets brought back to you, and then you know you're nursing your own child, Moses. But then the princess comes back and says, "Okay, I want to adopt him." You can't really say anything. You can't say no. You know. So <laughs> then the princess adopts Moses and and raises him well. I mean, it seems doesn't really go into detail, but you know, he was taken care of, and he was obviously wealthy, and he was living in with the. You know, I think that he lived in a world of of Egypt. You know, and I think that um, when he went and saw how bad his people were were being treated, it was a wake up call. You know, his roots, who he is. He's a Hebrew and these are his people. And he's always known that. And I love the fact that he has known that it wasn't like he was tricked or confused that he, he thought he was an Egyptian and those are Hebrews. Like, no, he knew he was a Hebrew. And it makes me even think that the princess told him what happened and told him the story. Yeah. And said, hey, you are a Hebrew. This is what happened to you. Um, I mean, the princess is awesome in this in this story, um, in history. She's she's amazing. Um, I mean, who knows oh, if hero. she was... Who, yeah, I mean, a hero. I mean, who knows how she was outside of this situation. Maybe she was, like, against her dad the whole time and was fighting to, like, you know, you know, unslave the Hebrews and was kind of, you know, doing what she can to do good. Mm-hmm. We don't really know, but in this situation, yeah, she's a hero, but I love the fact that Moses came back, saw his people being treated. Uh, now, now we get to the, the, the part where he, he kills one of the Egyptians. Um, yeah, that's exactly, you know, and, and it's like, you know, it kind of reminds me of the story we read in Genesis, of course, where they kidnapped and raped and held captive the sister of the men, um, Reuben and, uh, who, who, who was the crew there? Yeah, that was, uh, yeah. Simeon Levi. Yeah. I think that's and then they, they said, Hey, you we will make a deal with you guys. You guys get circumcised. Yeah. We'll exchange women. Yeah, Shek- and, it was Shechem. Yeah. And then it they went in Shechem. Just, with John Wick and just killed every man. <laughs> and we had a big podcast on that saying like, wow, like understanding that's bad. But then again, we get where they're coming from. Well, it is bad, but I mean, there's no, there's no exception for just murdering people. I mean, yeah. the, if anything, they should have taken just Shechem, the guy who committed the act, or maybe right. one or two of his. But here again, we don't know exactly the situation, right? He, it says, um, he, after looking in all directions, he made sure no one was watching. Moses killed the Egyptian. I don't really, I mean, 
I still think this is wrong. Like no, you have to oh, admit, 100%, I mean, this is, you know, 100%. No, I mean, I, like, my, it, it, my main point was, I know it's wrong, but I just, I, yeah. I understand where he's coming from and I'm not trying to justify it. Kind of just like the story in Genesis there with the, um, the sister, but it is one of those where like you get where he's coming from. I would be livid as well. I emotions would mm-hmm. be running extremely high, not saying that I stand by it, but I, I kind of get it in a way. Yeah, me too. I mean, it's it was it's a tough situation. You know, mm-hmm. these guys beating up another uh, one of your family members, essentially. Right. You know, and uh, who you know, uh, you can argue even it's self, it's a uh, it's protecting or self, you know, self self uh, defending your defending self defense. Well, yeah, and you made that Brian Nitsch, and, and and I know we're not condemning this, but you did make that point when we were reading the story in Genesis Mm -hmm. of she was held captive. She was a prisoner and they went in to rescue her. Now I understand that you do have a good point. We're like, well, they should have just killed the one guy rescued her and got out. They didn't have to go as Mm -hmm. far as killing every dude, you know, in the village. So like, I get that, but it does bring up kind of the same philosophy of this could be self-defense, not try to justify it, but I do think you have a point there. Um, yeah, so, yeah. I don't know. Well, yeah, I don't know. So you know, he says, "What, is, what does it say?" The next, he went out and the, and the second day, behold, two men of the Hebrews. See, check this out. His he so he killed an Egyptian just to get just to kind of get the the thought of this. He killed an Egyptian for for beating his fellow Hebrews. Then. It says the thirteen. The next day, Moses went out to visit his people and saw two Hebrew men fighting. And it says, "Why are you beating up your friend?" Moses said to one another, to the other one who started the fight. And then the, the man replied, "Who appointed you to be our prince? Are you going to kill me like you killed the Egyptian?" So even though Moses protected his Hebrew brothers, he still was was he still realized oh my god what's now what do people think about me what have i done so it just sh- goes to show you that doing this murdering someone or committing a sin against other people doesn't always go the way you think it's going to go you know i'm ass- i'm assuming moses moses here thought wow you should be thanking me i was helping f- our family out it's just interesting how sin never really really uh pays you know the bill always comes due <laughs> mm. so it's, it's, just, it's an interesting you know moses the great moses john he's he murdered mm. whether whether he uh whether we we think so or not I mean, it was this was murder he, he he planned it you know quickly and 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 and, and acted on it whether it was right or wrong, well, you know, no, don't get me wrong. These guys were were be, they were treating the Hebrews as slaves, like dogs, right? They didn't care about them. They wanted to put them down, but that this still doesn't make it okay to murder another human. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah, it. But the thing is, is that. Oh, and uh, let me just say, yes, I agree. Period. Next paragraph. Um, after it, it, we don't know how bad the Egyptian was beating the Hebrew. Uh, I agree. I mean, that's the I, thing. I, like I, I he, agree. the Hebrew could have been almost dead, that, dying. Yeah, right. And Moses stepped in, looked around, and said, "Okay, I'm going to make this move. I'm going to make this decision, and I'm going to kill this Egyptian out of self-defense for his bloodline, the Hebrew man." Yeah. And uh, he killed the Egyptian. So, which I'm all for. I, I just. It's a, and, we and, know we, and we don't even happened. know. It says, you know, he, it says Moses killed the Egyptian. Does the Egyptian, as as Moses stepped into the Egyptian, turn on him? Did they get in a fight? Did they wrestle? Was mm-hmm. the Egyptian mm-hmm. throwing a knife and a blade or punches? You know or did we Moses get body, out of the yeah. headlock and then Moses killed him? I mean, it doesn't go into a lot of detail. I'm telling you right now, I don't condone killing people, and I'm not saying that Moses was in the right, but. I do think it's an interesting conversation to say that this could be self-defense and that Moses stepped in to save another man. The could Egyptian be. could have turned on him. Moses killed him. Um, but you're right, though. I mean, we look at David, the mighty warrior, who was very close to God. You mm-hmm. know, and then look, 
you know, look, he, he, you know, he, he saw the lady in the, the garden and had sexual, you know, relations with her and, you know, and I, you know, there's ah, it's just sin, man, you know, and, but it, it does, it does make you realize that we all we all fall short and we we all make big mistakes and you know it's uh nobody's perfect for sure you know including Moses yeah no one is and see this is another beautiful situation not the fact that he murdered someone or, or you know that he's running for his life god uses people even when they screw up in the worst Mm-hmm. His plan was for Moses to be used to save Israel from the grips of Egypt. And he continued to use Moses. If you're listening and you think you've messed up, or you think, you know, you've done something too far, even murder someone. Maybe you're in jail and you're listening to this podcast. Maybe you're in the worst moment of your life. God still has a plan for you. He still wants you to move forward, to repent, to move, turn around from from evil and go forward. Yeah. Moses, he, Moses had a lifelong mission ahead of him. And think about this: if Moses would have let this kill his life, if he would have, if he would have just wallowed in self pity, mm. oh poor me, what have I done? I'm a terrible worm in the dirt. He, God would have never been able to use him like he does in the next few chapters. It is a very powerful statement that no matter what condition you think you're in, God knows that you're better than that. He sees you better than that, even when you've done the worst in your own mind. And you and, 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 and he's, and he's not uh, going around saying Moses is not turning his back to God and just killing people left and right. Exactly. He's not practicing sin, you know. Actually, it was interesting. Um, I don't know if you heard Brett's service yesterday, Brian. You should listen to it. It's all about redemption. Um, or I'm sorry, uh, repentance. But he really dove deep, deep, deep into like being saved. Because I even asked you this. Remember, Brian? I asked you. Well, isn't the word repentance in the being saved prayer? You know, if you mean it with your heart, say it with your mouth. For mm-hmm. some reason, I thought it was, and it's not, but he talked yeah. about how that intertwines with by being saved and giving your life to God and everything and, and to Jesus. And you are repenting to walk with God, even though it's not in the, you know, the saved prayer, you know, that, that we say with our mouth and believe with our hearts. And he just talked about that. But there are many verses in the Bible, though, that mm-hmm. talk about turning your back to God even after you're saved and just practicing sin and not caring and just practicing sin, practicing sin, practicing sin, know that you're doing bad and not caring one single bit. Let me tell you something. God does not like that. No, not at all. There's even biblical verses that will give you goosebumps where it says, I forget the exact line, Brian, but that we're supposed, you know, um, I forget the line. I don't know if you know it, but well, basically your salvation is in jeopardy. I forget the actual biblical lines. Yeah, there are a few. There are a few and, that, and that kind of allude to wiping yeah. out your name. Right. So I know that's kind of a different discussion and all that, mm-hmm. but um, man, just be hot for God. Don't be lukewarm. Yep. Don't, don't practice sin. Don't turn your back on God. I don't want to even take that gamble, but here, even before Jesus you know, this is not Moses just going out practicing sin and not caring about God. Because, I mean, look, here's the thing, too. And I'm not justifying it again. Murder's bad. But I am making a point, though. I do think there's a difference. Now, look at Moses. Moses takes his hand, and I, I don't mean to to be a spoiler alert. And when he puts his hand down in the Red Sea, what happens, Brian? How many, how many men does he kill? I mean, he kills the Egyptians in the Red Sea. So then you could have the conversation about war, right? Battle. Sure. So is this battle? Question mark. Is Moses killing this Egyptian that is literally, this Egyptian is beating this Hebrew possibly to death. We're now, we're we're in a battle. This is not the first Pharaoh where the, the Hebrews are quote unquote slaves that are just doing some labor for money and they have their land and everyone's working in peace. 
This is slavery, death, kill the kids. I mean, this is battle. So then again, Moses killed all the Egyptians in the sea. I know that God did. But when Moses took his hand down, he killed all the Egyptians. Question to you, Brian, is what's the difference here? Well, the difference here is definitely God instructed him specifically yeah, that's true. Yeah. when to raise his hand and when to lower his hand, yeah. you know, because they were the whole, the, the Israelite nation was being attacked and they are here as too, but you know, and, and this is a good, good point. You know, Moses took it upon himself to be the judge and the executioner. Mm. Not that, not that he was, you know, not that the guy was doing wrong. He was beating Hebrews with an S on the end. So, it, the guy was terrible. But I don't, I don't know if if murder was was the uh, case that they gave me. No. Well, Sorry. you make you make a you know great I mean? point on the answer there. That's thanks, it. thanks for clarifying that because you're right. There's a huge difference between what Moses did in the Red Sea to this. With there God is. telling him to do it and everything. Yeah. You know, was it justified? I know we need to go to the body cam in order to check that out. But, you know, I, I don't think Moses was wearing the body cam at the time. No, I don't think so. Body cam. It's tough, though, because, you know, as much as I want, I'm, I'm on the side of Moses, clearly, mm-hmm. you know, but uh, it's a good lesson for us. We don't have to act that, you know, we don't we don't always know if murder is not killing someone is never okay unless like i said it's 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 on defense of your life defense of your family's life and defense of somebody oh, else if somebody's if someone's beating up my um yeah if someone's beating up my daughter yeah oh they're they're death, dead they're gone I'm killing them yeah and i and i and i pray that god has mercy on my soul but i'm going to kill that man <laughs> i'm going to kill that man i'm going to kill that man in 5 seconds i'm going to kill that man so I, that's where I was saying, like in the beginning, where mm-hmm. it's like, God, oh, we get where Moses is coming from, even though I know that by me killing that yeah. man is is wrong. If I have a chance to stop him from beating my daughter, get him in a headlock, call the police and go that action and avoid killing him, then great. Yeah. But the human flesh of me yeah. would probably 100% shoot him in the I'm head or <laughs> take a so, knife to his throat. Hey, so Hey, that's... That's that's a and that's that's a, that's a godly thing to protect your family, no matter what, all the way to the end. You know, and, and, and it's a, you know it sets and so it, I love how twenty the end of two here sets up perfectly what's about to happen. The years passed. Egypt, the king of Egypt died, and the the they, the Israelites continue to groan under burden of slavery. You know, they cried out. They cry. The, the cries were heard by God. And now we're about to find out what the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob yeah. will do. Yeah, it's getting good. Here we go. Yeah. New new Pharaoh, bad Pharaoh, slavery, Moses. Well, like I love it. Like Moses. Like 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 and like I said, I don't I can't condone what Moses did. I, I love Moses, you know, I'll meet him one day. But verse twenty five, God looked down on the people of Israel and he knew it was time to act. God I love that. Yeah, it was go time. It was go time. Yeah, and, go time. And, and you could sit here and say, I mean, think how long the Egyptian, uh, I'm sorry, the Hebrews were slaves for. I mean, it, 400, it's years. 400 years. And, and God's like, okay, it's time. Why? Well, we don't know. God has a plan. He, he's, he's amazing. He came in right. and this is the time. Why is it this the time? We don't know, but 400 years. That's why in our lives, we need to be patient. Mm-hmm. And you know what? Even though this is bad sure. to say, it's like sometimes... We can be patient all we want. It'll actually never happen because it's God's will. Sometimes it's, it's, you know, sometimes God won't answer our prayer because it's not the plan that he has for us. Sometimes and, and, he will just say no. Yeah. You know, I've been, said, waiting, like, for, I've been waiting for, song. I've been waiting for three years and God hasn't, I know. well, I don't oh think it's going to happen, Tim. Right? I don't think it's going to happen because God doesn't want that from you. Sorry. It's funny. No, it's funny you say that because what's the, what's the saying? What's the song? Sometimes God's greatest gifts are unanswered prayers. <laughs> right, right. So, but you have eternal life to look forward to, and trust me, it's Thank not all God bad. You know, we're here for a blink of an eye. So it's uh, you know, patience. Patience is uh, an amazing thing, and you see it here with God. Patience. So if you mm-hmm. if you're if you're if you're thinking that a month or a year is long, this was four hundred years. Yeah. Don't forget, even though that's one chapter, Brian Nitsch, one chapter, we've... I know. 400 I know. years is in one chapter, 400. you know? 
So, you know, uh, that's, and that's why we don't know everything, you know, I no. mean, think about it in a span of 400 years was in 24, 25 verses. A lot happened. I mean, think about your life in the last 10 years, how much has changed mm-hmm. in 10 years yet 400 years. So much has happened. So many people ha- have been killed and so much motion is, and God's saying, okay, it's time, baby. Yeah. It is time. You know, it had to be right. this way. Right. Well, let's pray it out. And then yeah, yeah. tomorrow morning we'll get to chapter three, Exodus, and uh, we'll continue on as the story the is burning really bush. Ended. Something to look forward to, yeah. the burning bush. Yeah, oh my gosh, I can't wait. All right, hey. well, dear Lord, thank you for your word. Oh my gosh, thank you for your examples mm-hmm. and just guiding us as we read your word. And uh, it's just a blueprint of life. We walk with you side by side. And uh, we just, we love you so much. Thanks for bringing us all together on this Monday morning. Bless us with a great and healthy and safe week. Um, and uh, give us strength to to fight the worldview and to fight the demons and to everything that wants to pull us apart from you. We walk with you. We stand with you. We fight with you. Our, you know, keep our sword sharp yes. as we read your word. Yes. And we prepare for spiritual battle every day. And uh, we love you and amen. Amen. Great show, man. That was a good prayer, John. Oh, thank you. Yeah, you as well in the beginning. Um, Brian Neitch, and then follow us on Instagram at black, white, and sometimes red. Yes. That Instagram account is absolutely awesome. I love what you post there. Um, yeah, thank you. Beautiful. Just keep posting lines. the scripture and, yeah. and uh, hope it brightens up everybody's day. That's, that's the point. We'll see you guys tomorrow morning, 6 a.m. Salute. Salute.